Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope well. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Jacida, and in today's video, I wanted to do a little bit of a catch up. You know, um, I feel like I've been very absent from YouTube. Felt so compelled to like come here, you know, just to put you up to speed to what's been, what's been happening and, and where do I see this going? Okay, so let's start immediately. I've moved continents. I used to live in France. Uh, I lived there for three happy years. Um, now I'm back, Rwanda. Uh, I'm here for a job, you know, I work here and uh, this is my base um, country. I am from Angola as well. I wasn't a mother when I left Luanda, and now I'm here as a mom and it's just, it, it's just, we, it's complicated, you know, it's like me having to adjust to the society, the, the, the worries and the preoccupations during the day change. Luanda is the capital of Angola. I was here until I was 15 or 14, 15. And then I moved to South Korea and I stayed there until I was 23, 23 or 24. 24. Formative years were there. I started to turn into the person I am today there. And then I came back. I worked for six years in the same company. And then the opportunity to go to, go to France on an assignment came. And this is how I ended up in France to begin with. Now, the return. Six, five to six weeks since we've been back from uh, France. It's been quite a transition, guys. And what exactly has caught me off guard is like traffic. The amount of traffic here, guys, it's ridiculous. I've had two car accidents already since I've been back. One of them I was on myself. And the second one, I was with my son in the car and that really shook me. Like, I started crying. I cried all the way home. Luckily, you know, it was small, minor, minor things, but like they impacted me in such a way that it's just, there's like a certain anxiety every time I have to pick up the car to go any, anywhere. I don't feel safe. And let me explain why, you know, as many African countries, there's a big, big, big uh, difference in between. You know, some people are very, very poor. And some people have like a okay life. Okay, life, and then they're the very wealthy. I've been someone who has always worked, you know, I didn't come from like a rich family or anything like that. My parents always worked. Like there's a lot of robberies going on in the city. I always have to lock my doors, you know, like I'm always hyper aware of my surroundings, especially now that I have all of her, like my, it's my first time being here in Angola as a parent. Okay, I guess I have to explain why I'm so overprotective over all of her. Um, for those of you who didn't know, I don't think I ever spoke about this here, but um, you know, when we moved to France, it wasn't all, it wasn't the easiest uh, move as well. We didn't know that we were pregnant. I was working very hard at that period of time during that transition. The day before my move to France, I have I was offshore working. I was doing a whole lot of a lot of traveling by boat, by plane. You know, I wasn't paying attention to myself, to my cycle, and things like that. And so, like a month. After arrive, arriving, I started feeling really strange and I was like, okay, something, something's going on. Let me do a pregnancy test just, just to be sure that everything's okay. Because obviously my cycle was late, but like I'm someone who has like regular um, cycles. So with that, I was just like, okay, just to remove that, you know, it never happened. You know, it hasn't happened in all these years. So I did the test, I found out I was pregnant. We were so shocked, my husband and I. I was, I couldn't believe it. Like I was rejoicing, I was screaming, I was crying. On that same week, I got really bad news about the passing of my grandmother. And then by the end of that week, I started to like have a lot of period pains, like a lot of cramping. And I was just like, okay, this is not normal. I called the doctors, you know, to be observed in France. I was told, oh no, they said you're gonna have to wait until X amount of weeks to go to, to be seen by a doctor. Um, and then I started bleeding as well. My, I talked to my husband and I was like, okay, we have to go to Portugal. We have to be seen by a doctor immediately. We went to the emergency room first because the bleeding increased. And they were like, oh no, everything's fine. The pregnancy is still in the womb. At the time I might have been six weeks, six or seven weeks, six or seven weeks, or maybe eight weeks, maybe eight weeks max. And um, I did a blood test and the counts were still very high. And I was like, okay, maybe there's hope. There's hope, there's hope. And then the pain, just the, day, the following day, I continued to bleed. The pain was just getting out of control. I was literally suffering like that. I couldn't move. And we went back to the doctor, to a, to a different doctor. The doctor was the one who was like, oh, let's say, unfortunately, I think you're losing this pregnancy. And uh, this is when I kind of lost my mind. I went crazy because I wanted that baby. 
badly. I suffered a lot, you know, like there was a period of where I really think I lost my mind, you know, November, December, January period, especially December, I was completely crazy because I was still doing pregnancy tests. I was still believing that, you know, I was pregnant. I don't know, I couldn't let go of it. And then um, I went, we went back on vacation in March, you know, in February, and this is when I, I found out that I was pregnant again with Oliver. But the constant fear that I would lose that with Oliver, you know. So yeah, I wasn't a parent prior, so now I'm crazy. Did I move here? I moved back home because of a job. So I've been working for the past nine years as a corrosion and materials engineer. I've been in the same company. Um, I, I really like my job, you know, I can't really complain. And um, going to France was such an amazing experience because I got to work with the HQ team, you know, people who write the referentials and things of this nature are, and they have more knowledge and they work with different affiliates. And I always wanted to, you know, have this experience. And when the opportunity came about, I went and it was just so enriching for me. I learned a lot here. I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna be given a promotion, girl. I didn't get a promotion. I didn't even get a salary raise or anything like that. <laughs> I came back to the same office I used to work prior to leaving, guys. I was gutted, okay, because I had um, expectations. You know, once you go to big assignments, usually when you return, you have, you know, you are giving, you know, whatever. Though I was gutted and upset and like distraught, I have to tell you that it, it, it was a learning experience because. I went there to learn. I'm the one who has the knowledge, you know what I mean? Like, a title will not remove any, or take or remove anything from my experience. And I was like, I said, please take this as a lesson. Like, see the lesson here. You are not less than, you know, because you were not promoted, you were not given a, um, a title or anything like that. And I spoke to someone that I really respect and he told me that, that I see this as an opportunity to shine. It made me see that they should do this, this and that. You know, like you, you have the power today. You're just not seeing maybe your, your, your judgment is a bit clouded because you're upset and blah, 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 blah. you know, like try to see the lesson and um, yeah, my faith in God as well, you know, kept me grounded and I was like, okay, let me just, let me just do an amazing work. And also my workload has increased for, like greatly because I don't work with anyone, okay? I am by myself, I'm a one man band. And um, at my workplace, I feel a little bit out of place because during this period of, of me in France, I got to really know myself because I, I had to spend time with me, lots of time with me. You know, there was COVID, there was the pregnancy, there was like a lot of, a long time to like get to really know who I am because I used to be someone who needed to be needed in a sense you know like I, I always wanted to have people around me to like validate me and things of this nature but now i've accepted me i learned to love me more and accept me with my weird weirdness and quirkiness and awkwardness like i just embrace her you know i embrace me now more more than ever yeah you know it's like it's okay to be weird it's okay to to not want to do things, it's okay to dress weird. And here, let me tell you guys, here in Angola, people will tell you, girl, you, you, you look weird. Like your outfit is not it, your hair is messed up. <laughs> people really don't mind their business here. So, you know, it's for you to be like, you know what? I didn't ask. I didn't ask for your opinion. And let me tell you, you're not looking very good either. You know, like your hair is not lazy. Now I'm gonna talk about like the good things that I've had, you know, since I've been back and the first one has got to be like having family close by. My mom, my dad, my brothers, my sister, my, my cousins are around me and they are always very willing to help me with whatever. For example, my mom calls me like this, you know, can you bring my grandson so you can have a few hours for yourself? You know, go do your nails, whatever the case may be. I have that luxury now. This is this is real luxury. Um, another thing that I absolutely love about being here is the fact that I have someone that takes care of my home while I'm at work, that takes care of my son when he doesn't go to school. I trust, I love, love, love that. I pay her a salary, of course. This is actually something very common here. And in Africa, ah, you know, there's no Hermes here. <laughs> Although there's no Hermes here, 
I have been in contact with my essay, guys. She has been a sweetheart, you know, was asking, like sending text messages, updating me on some of the things, some of the things that I put on my wish list and some of the things that you guys know that are on my wish list already. Actually, I have to do a new wish list video, guys, because y'all are not. <laughs> Things change. And I have some tea as well to update you guys on. Uh, we finally moved. We moved last week to this apartment that we are in. Um, it's in a safe area, guys. And like I said, safety is the most important thing for me. It's calm, but mama has to wake up early to go to work. Like I have to wake up at five o'clock every day. Yes, I have to wake up at five. Oliver wakes up at 5.45, get him dressed, get in the car, and we have to be leaving by 6, 10, you have to be out at the house and drive to the city because if you wake up late you're gonna get home you're gonna get to work late because the traffic is insane so i prefer to just wake up um early my poor boy he eats in school the school is really good they feed him they take good care of him and so i will show you guys luanda i'll take you guys to the beach it's amazing the girls here dress okay like i've seen birkins at work I've seen all sorts of bags. I've seen all the shoes, all the bags, all the everything. I love it. I love that. Like African girls don't play. Don't they don't mess around when it comes to dressing up to work. It is a competition, and um, I'm just trying to stay true to me. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I cannot wait to continue doing the videos as with the normal frequency, and I will start. I just have to get myself back in the game. I have to get my head straight, and then just start creating content okay i hope you guys are doing amazing i love you all so so much and thank you for sticking sticking up to staying there for me for like riding with me and i can't even believe this channel has been growing even though i've been absent like i'm so grateful thank you all so so much and i see you all in the next video bye bye